Father, we thank you. We thank you for your kindness and your love. Lord, today we ask that you breathe upon us. Change our lives, Lord. Let every limitation be taken out of the way. And let the name of Jesus be glorified. Honor and glory we give unto you. Honor and glory we give unto you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Good morning again, everybody. Um, so, today we are in part two of our teaching on the black man. The black man. If you missed last week, please get a CD or download the message for free online. It's one of those messages that you need to um, allow to enter into your system. Every word of God should, you know, it's just a pivotal um, message. And we laid the foundation last week. I will continue from there. But today, by the grace of God, we are going to be looking at how to actually sidestep the curse of the black man, the limitation of the black man. You know, um, years ago, about if, some years ago, I, I, you know, I, I preached a message on breaking the curse of the black man. You know, but we can only break it as far as it concerns us and, and our community or people that are getting this message and they are pulling together. So it's, it's more of sidestepping than breaking. Praise the name of the Lord. So we, we will continue because what happened after last week's teaching was that I got a lot of messages, emails and stuff, people telling me new things that, that are contributions of the black man. Oh, Pastor, have you heard about this? Have you heard about that? And they are so inspiring. It's, un it's unbelievable, <laughs> you know. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be sharing um, um, some of them. We'll see that one of the contributions of the black man and one of the significance and the footprint of the black man makes him significant, makes him not substandard, makes him equal. We won't say superior, we'll say definitely not substandard. So we're going to go through a list. There's a group called the Grimaldi. It's a black race that lived in Europe 12,000 years ago. The complete skeletons are in the museum of Monaco, of, of this group of people that were in Europe. They were black in Europe, settled in Europe, and we knew where they came from. President of the Lord. Next. Cheops, the Egyptian king, whose name was Kum Khufu, a black man, built the Great Pyramid, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. 2.5 million blocks of granite, covers 13 acres. 13 acres. Um, that's huge. Took 100,000 men to build over 30 years. I mean, the, the man must be a great thinker. Must have capacity. Praise the name of the Lord. And that was a black man. So, people that tell us that black, black men don't have the capacity to, to do great things. Ah, uh, fa, fa, fa. <laughs> fa. Next. <laughs> Ganges was a river in India, even till present day, is named after the Ethiopian king, a descendant of Nimrod, that conquered Asia 
black man as far as India. And that river exists till today. Praise the name of the Lord. Next. Black men lived in the United States of America thousands of years. We mentioned that last week. Before Columbus set foot in America. In fact, Columbus wrote about meeting the, Indi, the, the West Indies and, um, and the black man in America. So how come he discovered it? Because they wrote history. They, 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 they manipulated history. How can you discover a place when, um, who did they say discover River Niger? Mongo Park. When Mongo Park got to Nicha, I mean to wherever, did he not meet people there? He did. So, how come he discovered it? <laughs> he wrote the history. Praise the name of the Lord. Next. There's a black man named Ponte de Sale. He founded the city of Chicago. Black man. The city of Chicago was founded by a black man. In 1779. Praise the name of the Lord. In fact, this may shock you. The, there's a um, text, scriptural text, in the original called the Septuagint. This next, the Septuagint suggests that Moses was a black man. And in fact, when God said to him, put your hand in your pocket or something, then bring it out again, it became white. Because it was a black man. Put it back. Now, some people here say they can't even imagine the picture. I can't want this to be a black man. That's the challenge. That's the challenge with us. We, did you know that a lot of the Jews... They are black Jews. As in, they are actually Jews. Mixture of Shem, Am, did you know that <laughs> one of the greatest people that will ever impact your life are people that will come to your side when you are at the lowest point of your life. Did you know that? You, the, 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 one of the greatest people that will ever impact your life are people that will share in your pain, that will share in your burden. Did you know that it was a black man, Simon, that carried the cross of Jesus when Jesus was at the lowest point of his life? Black man. Okay, at least that one was clear. It's clear in scriptures, right? If you, if you want to debate Moses, you can't debate that. You can't debate that. So the black man shared in the burden of the cross, directly in the burden of the cross. Military strategist, Annabelle, next. A black man is the father of today modern warfare still refers to the strategy of Annabelle. In fact, his tactics are still being taught in military academies in the U.S., in England, in France, in Germany. They, they call him the father of military strategy, black man. Amen. So let's get contemporary a little bit. A black woman, Dr. Shirley Jackson, received a PhD from MIT, an experiment in theoretical physics paved the way for numerous developments in telecom space, including Touchstone, DTMF, portable fax, color ID, call waiting, fiber optic. So without this black woman, there will be no fiber optic cable, there will be no um, color ID, there will be no call waiting, 
there will be no touch tone on your phone. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. That's huge. A black man next invented the blood bank. It was a black man next. A black man invented the first clock. In the U.S., a black man, next, a black woman holds 135 patents, and there are hundreds still under review, this same woman, primarily in, in, in voice over IP. A black man in fact, Nigerian black man, Oluro Timibadero, is the first and only cardio-nephrologist in the world. <laughs> Currently the only one. And he's an assistant pastor in that church in Mississippi. Praise the name of the Lord. And the list, I can go on and on and on and on and on. The point is, why do we go through this list? We, you need to understand that your, we have a great heritage. The black man, you see, the, particularly the, the black American, still struggle with the slave mentality. The black man struggles and uh, the identity of the black man is synonymous today to slavery, to poverty, to to servitude, and that needs to change in your mind. That needs to change. That needs to change. You know, I, I, I was speaking to my colleagues, and when this, when we did this um, teaching on Sunday, and we, we use this graphic, you know, usually uh, we have a creative team that come up with all these creative things, teasers, on the seconds, all these graphics, you know, and all that stuff. But but this one, I. I just decided to do it myself. So, so I did it. And, and, and they were telling me that if we had used the one they came up with, the black man was bowed down. Because that's the image subconsciously in their minds until Sunday. The black man bowed down, sitting down in chains. That needs to change. In fact, the word slave was originally applied to white people. It comes from Slav, the word Slav. And that means Russian people captured by the Germans. So the Russians that were captured by the Germans were called slaves. Slavs, slaves. So it wasn't synonymous to the black man. Next, the first slaves held in the U.S. were not black people. Did you know that? They were white people. Europeans, mostly British and Irish. In fact, the Irish slaves were the cheapest slaves. White slaves were sold in the U.S. 50 years after the Declaration of Independence. A former president of the U.S., Andrew Johnson, was a runaway slave, a white man. So we need to understand that slavery is not synonymous to black people. But every other race has been able to pull themselves out but the black man still derives his identity from slavery. And that needs to change. Praise the name of the Lord. Next. Free blacks actually bought white slaves. So, there were black people in the, in the U.S. that actually bought white slaves before some states prohibited it. But we will not see movies of a white Kante Kinta Kunte. 
Why? Because that race pulled itself out. And today is history. So we can pull ourselves out. And by the time our children grow up, it will be history. It's so important that we have the right concept and perspective of, of, of things. The contribution of the, of, of the black man is, is immense. We, we were talking about the Benin um, Empire, the Benin City, last week. Did you know that the walls of the Benin City was longer than the Great Wall of China? Fact, fact. I mean, someone sent me a documentation on, on The Guardian. The Guardian.com um, did um, an article on it. Fact. That the, the, the amount of, of architectural beauty of that city, by the time the Europeans came, they saw architectural design that, and patterns that they said was uh, chaotic. Only for 100 years after, a mathematician, an European mechanic, discovered that it was a mathematical sequence of numbers that they used to generate it. So they named it, and they named the white man as the one that discovered it. As something that has been existing for centuries. By the time the Portuguese went back, the first expedition, when they discovered, um, when they for themselves, discovered for themselves <laughs> Benin cities, they, they went back and they said that this city is so organized and so well managed that the houses didn't have doors because there were no thieves. The design of the houses, they have doors. Everybody was wealthy. Inequality, capitalism, is what creates thieves. Don't you know that? In fact, <laughs> The article said, with its mathematical layout, the earth works longer than the Great Wall of China. Benin City was one of the best planned cities in the world when London was a place of thievery and murder. Benin City didn't have doors. So why is nothing left? That was the question. Why? 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 Today, there's barely, you can, no trace of that city. No trace. And there are maybe a few things. The British came and burnt, and burnt it down. They carried the artifacts in the museum, in the, in the British Museum. You see all the artwork of the Benin Empire. How did that happen? The curse caught up. You see, when you have a people that is operating under a curse, they can thrive, but the curse always catches up. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every curse that wants to catch up with you will be totally destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus. You, you need to understand the dynamics. So what is the problem? Today we're going to learn how can we sidestep it? How can we sidestep this cause? How can we ensure that when we build cities that have existed, that they endure? How do we ensure that we don't get limited?
Joshua 1 8, God was speaking me to Joshua. We, we read that last week from the NRSV. It says, The book, this book of the law, shall not depart out of your mouth, Joshua. You shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to act according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success or shall be successful. Now, God was speaking to Joshua. We explained last week. God didn't say to Joshua, based on your military strength, you will have enduring success. God did not say to Joshua, based on your athletic capacity, you will have enduring success because you're a great warrior like Nimrod. You will have a great success. God did not say to Joshua, because you can operate in the supernatural, you will have enduring success. Joshua was the one that said to the son, stand still. And the son stood still. So, but God didn't say, because you are anointed. You know, sometimes we are just looking for anointing, anointing, anointing. And we think that's what we guarantee. There's a place for anointing. <laughs> Again, don't get me wrong. However, if you want enduring success, the principles of the word of God must be what directs and operates your life. Ask the black man, typical black man, how he became successful. You see, he doesn't know that anybody that tells you they know how they become millionaires are lying. You know, some people send me some article about some billionaire that was saying that Rubbish. Total rubbish. That's a typical black man. The, every other race will study what happened. Every other race will like reverse engineer the process and try and replicate it and repeat the success. And God is saying that this process is in my word. The word of God. If you Meditate on it, Joshua. You will make your ways prosperous. And you will have good success. Joshua was the one that Moses laid his hands on before he died. And his spirit was transferred to Joshua. Why did God not say, because Moses, my servant, has laid his hands on you, you will have enduring success. Why? So why are we running up and down looking for someone to lay hands on us? Something is wrong with that. If you're the best man of God on earth, when he lays hands on you, it's still no guarantee. I didn't say so. It's in the Bible. The only guarantee is this book of the law <laughs> shall not depart out of your mouth. You will meditate there day and night. It is the word of God. It is the word of God. So, so if you want to come out and sidestep, because the word of God must be priority. And, you know, we, we are going to zoom in on the specifics, some specifics, as time permits us today, on how to sidestep this course. How to sidestep it. And by sidestepping it, how we can understand the principle and teach it to the next generation. How we can create a movement of black people that are not under the curse of the black man. And maybe eventually a nation. Praise the name of the Lord. We said last week that... Um, we drew the diagram of the family tree of Noah, where it all came from. So, Noah had Japheth, Shem, and Ham. Ham had Canaan, Put, Egypt, and Cush. Cush was the black man. Egypt was also partly black, because most of the early rulers of Egypt Egyptians were, were black guys. 
But Cush was a real black guy. In fact, his name means black. When he came out, they, they looked at him and said, ah, do do, you know, <laughs> black. So he, that was his name. That was the name they gave him. So that is Cush. Now, Cush was the father of Nimrod. And the Bible stated clearly that Nimrod was the first one on the face of the earth to be great. And he led his nations, the children of Ham, to dominate. That's why you will have Ethiopians ruling as China, ruling India far back then. That's how you have black men in the West. In Europe, why? They are descendants of Nimrod. The first world power was a black man. Nation. Then it shifted. The dispensations shifted from Ham to Shem. So Shem became the superpower. And today we know that it has shifted to Japheth. Right? Japheth was the one that went to Greece, the Caucasian. It's with Japheth. And like we said last week, Bible scholars are saying, since it appears to be cyclical, it's coming back to harm, to the black man. Well, that sounds good. But like I said last week, there's nothing in the scriptures that points to that. However, the Bible says that all these nations will become one under Jesus. And as one people, we will reign with him forever and ever. Praise the name of the Lord. So, so instead of looking for dominance of a race, we should look for significance in his presence. Instead of looking for our race will be dominant again and will rule the world, we should look for significance in God's presence and we explain the dynamics of the cause which we, um, for time, and how it worked down the line. But God will empower us to sidestep that curse in the name of Jesus So because the curse was in place, it flows down. And curses, usually, two things about curses. It releases supernatural forces to supervise this pronouncement and make sure it happens. And secondly, it, it creates um, a pattern of behavior that now entrenches the negativity. So, if somebody is <laughs> discussed, not only will there be demonic forces trying to supervise and implement it, the person himself will begin to behave in a cursed way. Do you understand? Like a joke my wife sent to me this morning, and, and, and they said that, how do you know that uh, a white man has a black guy? How do you know that the, when you people say the village people are after you, what do you mean? That the, your village is on your case. So what do you mean? So the black man said to the white man, ah, that's very simple. He's like, we were in school one day, and his friend had an exam at 10, p 10 a.m., and he woke up at 9.45 and he started cooking beans. <laughs> he said, you can tell that village has a hand inside. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So what that means is that there are certain patterns of behavior that when you see them, you say, hmm, The village people have come. So, 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 it, it is. And if you look at the black man, there, 
consistent patterns of behavior. We, we went through them last week. In fact, when, when the um, Portuguese first came, 1444, and when they attacked, it was, it was actually called slave raids. So they come, they attack the, the coast of West Africa, and they raid the people and carry them off as, as slaves. But that succeeded a few times. And they discover that when they come to raid now, they are met with a formidable force. And the black man can defend himself. And they were losing people, losing their ships. They were getting killed. The ones that survived, we go and tell the story. They come again, they get whooped. So they think their strategy that, look, these people, we cannot use force. They came with a white flag. Peace. We want to understand you. And they studied the black man. And they said that he has no loyalty to his people. For gain, a black man will sell his brother. That the leaders are not committed to the people. The leaders can't give their lives for the people. In fact, the the, the culture of the black man is that the people are in servitude to the leader. So you have to say, Ranka Dede, Ranka Dede, live forever. That is, may your, may your time be long and all that stuff. And be in subjection. So it was easy for them to identify the chiefs, pay them. And the chief will carry 300 of his people and that was easier than conflict. They saw that the pattern of the thinking of the black man was so interesting that the black man has what they call a crab mentality. I explained that last week also. The crab mentality mentality simply is this. If if someone is, is striving in a community instead of everybody in the community to join hands together, right? And, you know, and make it our success and make it great and make it good that they, all they will think about is how to pull him down. And they will not stop until they pull the person down. And when the person is there, say, hey, where did you think you were going? <laughs> Every crab spirits, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we curse them. And we break their hold in the mighty name of Jesus. You will get to where God has put in your hearts to get to. You will take the territories that God has destined for you to take. In the mighty name of Jesus. So we see, they saw that there are certain patterns. Betrayal was rife. Betrayal was rife. Kings had secrets. All you needed to do was entice the king's wife. And the king's wife would join the other defaulting team, reveal the secret of the king, that's the end of the kingdom. They saw that greed was norm. So, when there is greed, there will be all sorts of criminalities. So, the slave raid became slave trade. It became slave trade in, 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 in such a way that the black man was actually scrambling to look for foreign partners to sell his people. It's still going on today. Women are still being sold to prostitution heavily. You see, one of the first steps to freedom is is to first realize that there's a problem. Many times, we don't accept that we have a problem. So we never really get free. Because, guess what? 
We think all is well. God wants us to sidestep the limitation of the black man. That is hard for you and me. So that we become a people that is really pastor, is it possible? Yes, it is. That's what Jesus came for. It is possible. It is actually very possible. So, the first thing you have to do is accept that it is possible. Accept that there's a problem and accept that freedom is possible. First step to freedom is to come to terms with the situation. This is real. This is what is going on. This, I mean, if you can identify a problem, then you can begin to look for ways to solve the problem. If you can't identify a problem, then... You can be trying many things that will not work. In 2 Samuel, David, in 2 Samuel 16, 11, David was being cursed by Shimei. And David's, one of David's guys says, that, give me permission, let me, let me kill this fool. And David said, no, 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 leave him. Leave him. If my own son can do this to me, let I, I, a son of Saul is abusing me. I cannot be a problem. <laughs> let him abuse me. In fact, maybe God will hear the abuse and have mercy on me. David was real. This there's a problem. In Ruth one, in Ruth one. Keep it up. 19 to 21. Ruth, Naomi had come back to Bethlehem. And, and Naomi had been battered, lost her husband, lost her two sons. One of her daughters in law had turned her back on her. She was just left with Ruth. And when she came back, because she, she left as a celebrity, they were wealthy. When she came back, the people of Bethlehem were like, is that not Naomi? And they began to dance and, you know, trying to celebrate her. Naomi says, no, 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 no. Don't celebrate. Things are bad. You know, many times people don't want to accept that things are bad. Say, oh, but pastor, is that not negative confession? Nope. Nope. That's not negative. Like if, you, if you say things are bad, you remember that's negative like confession. But you have to accept. Let the weak say, I am strong. But the weak must know that he's weak before he can say, I am strong. So you have to. That's the first thing. There is a problem. So how do we break out, Pastor? How do we break out? Two things. I've tried to simplify it to two things. If we can remember these two things, just two things. How do we sidestep this thing? Number one, reconstruct your foundation. Reconstruct your foundation. Know where you are from. Know who you are. <laughs> when I say that, it's deeper than just knowing I'm from Oshogbo or, or, or I'm from Abakaliki. <laughs> it's deeper than that. Galatians 3, 28. The scriptures I've been reading over and over and over. It says, there is no longer Jew nor Gentile. Now, if you look at that scripture very well, who are the Jews in the, in the descendants of Noah? Come on. Am, Shem, or Japheth? Shem. There's no Jews. Who are the Gentiles at this time? Or the Greeks? Japheth. So, there is no Jews, Shem, or Gentile, Japheth. The word Gentile there doesn't refer to everyone that is not a Jew. It can, but in this, it's talking about the Greek. If you, if you look at the original, it's talking about there's no Jew or Greek. 
Gentile Japheth. There's no slave or free. Slaves are those who have been pronounced to be the slave of their brothers. Ham. There's no slave or free. So there's no, there's no Shem. There's no Japheth. There's no Ham. There's no male or female. There's no gender discrimination. It says, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Your foundation is in Christ Jesus. Yes, we have to know who we are, where we are from. It's important. Jesus of Nazareth, Paul of Tarsus, and on and on and on. It's important. However, Jesus did not derive his identity from Nazareth. Jesus always talked about my father. I am my father. Jesus reconstructed, if you will, his foundation and pointed it to heaven. To the point that everybody, a lot of people around him, could not even stand it. So, what am I saying? You have to see yourself as Christ. For a long time, even till now, I don't think she knows. Ten years into our marriage, if you ask my wife, where's your husband from? You know what she will tell you? He's from heaven. And, and honestly, she, she didn't know where I'm from. And because whenever she asked me, where are you from? I said, I'm from heaven. <laughs> and you're like, I'll put your wife the way you're from. <laughs> Do I? I do. But the point is this. I'm so aware that my citizenship is not of this world. It's not of this world. You have to understand that. So, the first thing is you reconstruct you reconstruct your your foundation. You know, we explained during the gold and silver series. Do you remember the gold and silver series? Um, we explained that this is the Adamic line. The black line. This black line, not the black. I don't know if it's a black man, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying Adam was a black man, no. Um, it, it's, it's the beginning, the Adamic line. Along the line, somewhere here, Noah came into being, right? So, the one that concerns us is Ham. Ham, Cush, Nimrod, and on and on and on and on and on. Now, that line still continues till today. There are people that will remain under the curse of Adam, the curse of Noah, the curse no, of, of Ham, sorry, and, 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 and on and on and on and on. Why? Because that's how it is. At some point, at this point, God called a man called Abraham and said to him, Come, walk with me. In you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. What is the opposite of a curse? What is the opposite of a blessing? So in you, Abraham, I'm going to remove all the curses on all the people on the earth. In you. So that my blessing can flow to the people. So God started a new race. Abraham was called a Hebrew. He started a nation. But one man that couldn't even have a son. 
a child. God started a whole nation. Are we still together? Okay. Sometime here, the Jews on Sinai said to God, we don't want to have a one-on-one relationship with you. Talk to Moses. If you talk to us, don't worry, we'll obey. You are too dangerous. <laughs> you know, when you have a relationship with someone, you begin to see the size of the person that somebody that doesn't have a relationship does not see. That is why husband and wife is a peculiar relationship because the wife can see some things that nobody else can see. And the husband can see some things that nobody else can see. So it takes the grace of God for You know, when you have a wife that really respects her husband, that's a woman of God. Because it means she can, because it means she can look beyond him and look through the lens of God and see him for who God says he is. But you see, when you come close to someone and you see all the fronts, you think you love the person. Ah, it's not love, you don't know yet. No, 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 So people, you think you love them, live with them. Just spend one weekend in their, life, in their house. You will live delivered. <laughs> delivered and set free. So, they said to God, we don't want to have a relationship with you. We can't handle you. They pushed God away. And God says it's fine. So they, there was now the necessity for rules and regulations on how to deal with the things of God. It used to flow from a heart of relationship. But they said no. So the Mosaic covenant came into place. So that's where you have the Levitical priesthood and the, all the laws and all that purification laws, civil law and blah, blah, blah. And that's honestly is not God's heart. But very few people continued here, like David. (laughs) David didn't take this detour. When Christ came, he put an end to the old covenant. When the Bible says the old covenant, it's talking about the Mosaic covenant. It's not the Abrahamic covenant. The Bible says the Abrahamic covenant is an everlasting covenant. Eternal. So it puts an end to the Mosaic Covenant. So even those of us that we have been on this line, we are not here. When we get to this place and you make this turn to the cross of Christ Jesus and you come into Christ, what happens is that you now join this line. A new line. The Abrahamic line. The line of blessing. The line of blessing. You are out of the cursed line. You are out of the cursed line. Through the cross of Jesus, you are in the blessed line. So what we are saying is that in Christ God disconnected us from the cursed line and connected us to the blessed line. That's what happened in Christ. And the reality of this, the more it becomes live in your life, you begin to break free. You begin to break free. And that is how it works. In Numbers 23, Verse 8, Numbers 23, 8, the word of God says, I mean, how shall I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? Even when the enemy wants to curse you, it will be said of you, you can't be cursed because God has not cursed you. When they want to curse, the heaven will say, how can you curse whom God has not cursed? 
When the world will curse you, heaven will say, how can you denounce whom God has not denounced? We need to reconstruct our foundations. Reconstruct it. In Psalm 109, Verse 28, Psalm 109, 28. This is, then let them, then let them curse if they like. But you will bless me. When they attack me, they will be disgraced. But I, your servant, I'm going to explain that in a bit, will go right on rejoicing. So, let them curse if they want. I, in our own case, your son, we are children of God. Fundamentally, not servants. Fundamentally. We serve him, but fundamentally we are children of God. So, we, because we are connected to the line, to that line, because We are here now. This is where we are now. We can sidestep because of a black man. So the first thing is to what? Reconstruct your foundation. It should show up in your mind. It should show up in your nomenclature. It should show up in your dealings. If we ask the people closest to you, they should be able to tell us that this is how this person thinks. This is how this person is. This is what this person believes. If we ask your children, they should be able to say, this is what my daddy says. This is what my daddy says. This is what my daddy says. This is who my daddy is. If we ask your husband, he should be able to tell us. If we ask your wife, she should be able to tell us. If we ask your colleagues, they should be able to tell us. And that one is different. Too. When everybody else is laboring, they are cruising. Praise the name of the Lord. The first thing is in your subconscious mind and in your spirit man. In your spirit man, it must be settled where your source is. Your source is not harm. Your source is Christ. My source is not Kush. My source is Christ. And in him, there is no Jew, no Gentile. There is no bond, slave or free. There is no male or female. We are one in him. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Then, then, what's the second thing, Pastor? The the second thing is this. When you have reconstructed your foundation, the second thing is choose to break free. Choose to break free. What? Choose to break free. I thought once Jesus has done what he has done, freedom will be automatic, yes and no. Because some things have taken centuries to form. You have to be deliberate in breaking free. I mean, the analogy that is given is that of how to limit a monkey from scaling a fence. So when you want to limit a monkey from scaling a fence, maybe this, this, the, the fence is two meters high. The monkey normally can scale the fence easily. So but because the monkey is like four feet, three feet maybe, They put the 
um, a, a transparent lead, maybe at one meter, over the monkey. So the monkey sees the fence, he sees his target, he jumps, he hits the lead, he comes back. The monkey has everything physically possible to scale the fence easily. But they put the lead there, he sees the fence, he jumps, he hits the lead, he comes back. He hits the lead, he comes That is what curses do. Curses put a limitation. They put a limit. It's a limiter. It hinders movement. Now, when you hit and hit and hit, what you discover is after a while, in the case of the black man, this, has, this is centuries have passed. Then when they remove the lead, the same monkey that could have scaled the two-meter fence cannot jump past one meter anymore. Why? Because it's, it's called mental conditioning. He has been mentally conditioned. When he jumps, he, the monkey gets to that one meter and stops. So the lead has moved from outside to inside. Once the lead is inside, that person is limited for life. So that lead that is inside must be broken. You must choose to break free. You must, the fact that a cost can be removed and people can continue in the pattern and still live as though they are under the curse. The curse may have been broken. Oh, pastor, come and break the curse. Yes, we'll come. We'll pray. The curse, destroy. But the pattern of behavior that has been formed over the years, the centuries, remain. So we need to break free out of that. And that takes work. You have to be deliberate. Genesis 27. He says, his father Isaac answered him, your dwelling will be away from the earth's rich, riches, away from the dew of the heaven. And this was um, Esau. Verse 40, he says, you will live by the sword and you will serve. Esau was another person that had this, the, the curse of servitude. Your brother. But, there was a but. <laughs> I love that. You know, it's not the end. Thank God he always makes a way of escape. It says, but when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. Until then, you continue to serve. When you grow restless, when you choose to break free, you will, you will throw his yoke off your neck. When you choose to break free, so you have to stop repeating the curse pattern. You have to choose to break free. Stop. For the black man, it's simple. All that we've listed, all that is, is before you. Number one, be a loyal person. Stop betraying people. Don't be a crab. Choose not to be a crab. You see somebody is making progress around you. Yes, the person has weaknesses. Why? How come it's the weaknesses that you are focusing on? How come that's the only thing? You're a crab, my friend. You need to stop being a crab. Join hands in lifting the person up. It says, join hands. Join hands. Don't be repressive. Just go in the opposite direction. Don't continue the pattern. Stop coming late to church. You know, just very few people are clapping. Only people that come early that is clapping. Check everybody else that is not clapping. They used to be perpetual latecomers. The black man doesn't respect time. Doesn't. You have to be different. You have to move against the tide. You have to choose to break free. Stop coming late for meetings. Business meeting, church meeting, whatever meeting. Be that person that everybody can say is going to be there on time. 
you've started changing the tide of the black man. Succession planning. Think about your business. Who am I? What is the succession plan? Black men don't think of succession planning. What is the succession plan? What is the succession plan? Get rid of greed. Read a book. Just, it's not hard. Just take the book and open it. You will discover that it's not very hard. Black, the black man doesn't like reading. And he doesn't like writing also. That's why a whole civilization can be wiped off because there's no documentation. Doesn't like reading. Doesn't, just likes to chop life. To tell stories. To sit down and drink burukutu. You know. <laughs> Listen. You, you have. You, 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 you. You have to change the tide. You have to change the tide. Everybody say, I. I. Olu Femi Monei. Will change the tide. I will break free. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. You have to. The typical black man feels that anything that is foreign is better. The black man has inferiority complex. He cannot wear his own hair. I'm not looking at anybody now. <laughs> he, he has to be he has to be Brazilian. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies, but <laughs> but we have to change the tide. <laughs> How many people believe that black is beautiful? It is beautiful. The inferiority complex must come to an end in your life. You must be able to develop something and know that what you have developed is superior. And it's not inferior to any work. By the grace of God, I've had the privilege of working. I don't want to say all over the world, but in a lot of countries in the world. And I can tell you that we are not inferior. As far as this is concerned. Not at all. The, the, the key thing is we deem our work inferior. We believe we can't get a contract until there's a white guy on our team. We believe that we need the blessing of the white guy. That has to come to an end. In the name of Jesus. In Genesis 27, the NLT translation, verse 40, says, you will live by the sword, talking to Esau. And you will serve your brother. He says, but when you decide to break free, who decides to break the, the freedom? When you decide to break free, <laughs> you will throw his yoke from off your neck. Say, I, I. Olufemi Munei, hereby throw the yoke of the servitude of the black man away from my neck. I throw the yoke of the curse of the black man away from my generation. I throw the yoke of the bondage of the black man away from my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. For time, Let's burn our hearts as we, as we burn our heads. Let's talk to God. I mean, you should just say thank you to the Lord. 
Can you feel? Can you see a great future? Even for your children. I mean, for, for your generation yet unborn. Because you will teach them these things and more. I want to pray with you if you are here, you have never given your life to Jesus. Jesus is not the Lord of your life. You're like, Pastor, can you pray with me? I need to reconstruct my foundation. I need to come to Christ. Or I used to be born again and backsliding. Can I come back to, to God? Yes, I want to pray with you. If that is you, put up your hand over your head. I will pray together. Quickly, quickly. God bless you. If I put up your proper hand, well, well, shoot it up over your head. Over your head. If the hand is up there, put it up confidently. If you are online, the structures are scrolling. That is me. The rest of us, let's, let's talk to God. Let's say to the Lord, Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I still need to take this step. Pastor, pray with me. Put up thy hand over your head quickly, and I'll pray with you. Father, I thank you for opening my eyes. Thank you. 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 Father, we pray for everyone that is surrendered to you today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask that you breathe upon them, Lord. Every one of us in this place today. That we will stand tall for you. And our generation will be free from the curse and limitations of the black man. In the mighty name of Jesus. Honor and glory we give unto you, Father. Honor and glory we give unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord.